This is the new VW ID5 in the sporty GTX trim with Thomas and Autogefühl, so to speak, the coupe version of the ID4 electric vehicle. And behind me, what a beautiful, majestic scenery here today for you in Austria. This is the Wilder Kaiser or the Kaisergebirge, which means Empire's Mountain or Wild Emperor. And the VW Empire, after taking a hit, as the first Death Star was destroyed, uh, I mean, after Dieselgate a couple of years ago, the VW Empire wants to strike back with electric vehicles. And this is one of the new ones for them. Let's take a look if this is going to work and how sporty does it actually drive? How different is it from the ID4? In the front, we have the typical closed off grille, all set on the electric vehicle performance with best aerodynamics. And we can see a nice light signature here, all the way horizontal, split by the logo in this retro styling here as they used to like, you know, really decades ago and the main headlamp here automatically comes with the id4 uh, with the id4 it's optional with the id5 the matrix led is standard equipment the gtx version you don't have to go for the gtx you can also go for base versions but the gtx then here has this special sporty lower grille in that kind of honeycomb style and this really striking color is called king's red so it's about kings and emperors today here in this article fuel episode when we take a look at the side profile this is of course the biggest difference to the vw id4 the id4 rather continues with that roofline classic suv styling and here we have that falling roofline which makes this vehicle here a little bit more aerodynamic Definitely sportier styling because here that hip area is also more, you know, yeah, just more prominent. We also have special wheels on this vehicle. Usually it comes 19 to 21. 20 inch would be standard for the GTX. And these here are the optional 21 inch wheels. Let's see how the comfort plays out, either base suspension or the optional DCC, the adaptive suspension. For a crossover look, however, they do keep also in the GTX version here these crossover wheel arches. 4 meters 60 or 181 inches is the length. Of course, the wheelbase just the same with the ID4, <laughs> ID4 and ID5. Just the rear overhang is a little bit longer because of the different styling, but not big of a difference. Here we can see you have this wing that actually channels the air below that. That's very interesting. And I really like this very modern rear lamp signature that. Yeah, looks kind of like, you know, this tech technology styling. The GTX model, by the way, gets once again different accentuations here in the lower part, you know, with this, you know, it's very interesting. There's a lot of, well, it's actually quite expensive to do it that in that way then. Big black cladding, then uh, silver conscious in the lower part, and then you also have the GTX badges. It will be interesting. Does it also drive like a GTI, just X here with also soft off-road capabilities or what? The ID5 is available as rear-wheel drive model or all-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive is then 10.4 or 8.4 in the acceleration figure, these two trims. If you want to have all-wheel drive, then it's the GTX right here, one like the motor in the rear, one in the front, and then you're at 6.3 seconds in the acceleration figure, one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. In all cases, the ID5 gets the 77 kilowatt hour net battery, the big one from the ID4. In the ID4, you can still pick one, also a more entry level version. However, since the electric ranges are not that high yet, usually experience from the ID4 around 400 kilometers or 250 miles in good conditions, I would definitely pick always the biggest battery. battery. In the ID5, it's the biggest one anyway. Turning indicators, cascading, because you have that matrix LED light. And in the front, the lower part of the daytime running light is replaced. And now it gets really interesting as for recharging and battery specifics. The Pro version, there are two Pro versions with rear wheel drive and here the GTX model. They share the same battery capacity of 77 kilowatt hours net. However, different supplier, so different cell chemistry. The Pro versions, rear wheel drive versions, get the one from CATL, the Chinese supplier. Also the Fisker Ocean will receive that, so it tells us something about the charging curve for the Fisker Ocean as well already. And here the GTX model gets the one from LG, the Korean supplier. And they indeed differ in recharging. That's very interesting. So first of all, AC recharging is 11 kilowatt both, and then DC recharging is 155 kilowatt now, 
for the GTX and 135 kilowatt peak for the Pro models. And the interesting thing now is that the 5 to 80 percent SOC value, state of charge value, is 36 minutes for the GTX and 29 minutes, now 10 minutes faster with that software update, for the Pro versions. So you might, well, wait a minute, I pay more money and get the overdrive version and then slower charging. It depends. This one has a higher peak charging curve. So the charging curve peaks higher but then falls earlier. The other one doesn't peak that high but then stays more consistent. So if you speed up the GTX on the motorway, you know, hammer it all the way through and then go for recharging and do like, let's say, 10 to 50, 10 to 60 percent, this one will be faster. If you go for the other one then and maybe have like more like really like 10 to 80 percent, 10 to 10 to 85 percent charging, then the pro versions will be faster. So it really depends on your user profile. High gloss piano lacquer here for the key fob. I wish there will be some days where we see alternatives to that actually. Then the door handles, flush door handles, they're kind of like integrated and you just press them from behind and that's basically it, door closing sound. It's quite solid. Well, and in case all electronics fail, you can really pull them out. You just have to do it like a little bit harder than you can see. This is like the manual opening then. Inside of the doors, top part here is a little softened up. And then you have this blue GTX trim with red contrast stitches. Mm, depending on the exterior color, it looks a little bit weird. It's good to see also blue accentuations, but also to the red exterior color, not sure if that is really fitting. The dashboard here also with some soft touch and again with this um, you know, blue layout. But yeah, when the car would be in a maybe white color exterior, that would be looking cool, I think, in this case then. Then you see the, the digital instruments are kind of integrated with the steering wheel column, soon more to that. Also hashtag capacitive BS buttons at the steering wheel. They're cool, they're easy to clean, but not too good to control while driving. Soon also to the user interface, all the details. Here are the seats. You either can get comfort seats or these sport seats. You have the choice. These would then be the ones more suitable for the GTX. Integrated head restraint, microfiber surface, really good quality, outside leatherette. So the seats are animal free completely and also quite plush and soft. Still they offer side support. As for the steering wheel surface, at this moment still animal skin, but this will change. The ID Bus now introduced a vegan steering wheel surface. Less animal skin use of course, also less use of resources, less use of energy and so on. More sustainable from the whole cycle. And the new steering wheels will be introduced in 2023 with the ID3 facelift and then also all ID5 and ID4 will get the new animal free steering wheel surface. Then here lowering down, lowering it down in and out. And you can see here how the instruments stay connected with the steering wheel. The whole instruments, they're quite small and it appears a little bit cheap, I have to say. The only thing you can do here is change something in these digital instruments. Like here, left and right, what area do you want to have a little bit bigger? But that's actually it. Why they focus on the head-up display. Head-up display with speed, loud speed and some GPS guidance. Then there's also a function available where you can have this augmented reality in the head-up display. Seating position here in the front. I really like these sport seats. We have electric controls and then you have this, you know, support here especially in that area at the same time plush bolstering so it's really soft to sit on comfortable and sporty at the same time works with tall adults and with one meter 89 or six foot two yes i've grown then <laughs> here a lot of headroom left there is this fixed panoramic roof and you can if you want to block out some more sun close this shade not all evs have that this one does so when you are in a very hot country or hot state, then it does actually work a little better to block out the sun. Takes a while, but you see it, it's also covering the whole area. Interior overview, really clean layout. However, a lot of high gloss piano lacquer. That's not really that suitable, I think, also at that price point. Then also here, not backlit sliders. No one really likes them, neither for climate nor for the audio. Exclusive information for you, viewer of Autogefühl. The sliders will be backlit. This is in development 
and yeah we're not sure when exactly probably in 2023 this one here being the updated software version 3.1 the voice assistant for example let's try that hello id i'm cold No there we go. It will so, get yeah, at the front left shortly. that works. And then here you can see that in the main menu, it is a little bit faster than before. So that's a step forward. However, it will not get my favorite system overall. Here the map, let's see. Yeah, it's somewhat responsive. Is okay. Yeah, I think we've seen better interface, but now finally some upgrades they have done. Also here how the visualization is done here inside that's actually quite good and now also a little bit more yeah just more fluid i would say that's german translation then apple carplay or android auto looks like this the bass sound system the normal one that is in here it's actually quite good but there's also an upgraded one available but yeah both have a nice sound actually music lovers would get the upgraded sound system then so overall also in that size now so much usable yeah, just that you have these climate sliders there. There is also a separate climate unit, um, like a screen. Then you can also have this classic climate where you can control everything. So have it here a little bit bigger, for example. Um, I think you can now at least work with that. Lower middle console, open area. You have these splitters. You don't have to use them. You can also remove them and then have a rather big open area. And then also here you can slide this one here completely or open it. Adaptive cup holders, and then either inductive charging pad or two USB-C chargers for your phone. I prefer the cable solution for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because it's more stable, the phone doesn't get hot and also charges faster. So what about rear seating and will it be a problem if you compare it to the ID4? Well, you can see here, styling wise, really lovely with these sport seats, microfiber as well, white contrast stitches, kind of like a single seat setup so visually that looks really amazing also there's no middle tunnel so using that ev platform that's of course a good thing however what i don't like that much inside of the doors first of all hard pack material here then the softer leather right here that's actually fine but then once again oh more high gloss piano lacquer can't we see something else there here leg room also fine for tall adults that works and also in the middle part you can sit it's soft enough so this can actually house five tall adults that works here in the middle part you can fold down this and then you have cup holes but they are not adaptive though let's open that rear hatch check out the boot or the trunk 550 up to 1575 liters and surprisingly that's a little bit more and the ID4 in the first figure. It's because, you know, you have a little bit more space in that area here and that makes the leader figure um, actually a little bit more because it's always measured below this cover. Above this cover here, then the ID4 here has a little bit more height. But then the normal length, well usable, 93, yeah, like this, yeah, 92, 93 centimeters or 36 inches. The width here is a good, yeah, almost a meter or 40 inches, so well usable. And the height below the cover is 44 centimeters or 17 inches. So and when we um, take out everything right here, we can also check out what's underneath there. You can store your cable here like this. You can also take out the whole thing to get even more height. That is possible. And underneath that one, is another one to be put up and then you have some more storage right there maybe for like for, for a secondary cable for example for like this whole household plug cable overall very well usable and of course you can also load th through things yeah um i'm good everything's fine everything's fine um um, I know you're laughing. <laughs> it's no problem. We're here for fun, aren't we? So then here, in the total length is one meter sixty-five or sixty-four inches. Does it have a frunk? Well, no. So this is on the one hand a disadvantage, but it also does have some advantages. Let me explain that to you. 
First of all, what you can see here, wiper fluid, for example, then the normal starter battery. Yes, electric vehicles do need that, so the big battery can sleep. This one then activates the big battery and also takes care of some electric consumers inside the vehicle. And here, for example, this and the air filter box. And it's a good thing that's here, actually, because then you can easier change the air filter or also put a dual air filter in there if you have special needs for that. So it also comes with some advantages. You can easier access things, actually. However, still for everyday practicability, I think more people would actually want a trunk. Not only trunk. <laughs> frank, frank, frank. What about you? Tell me in the comments. Would you like to see a frank here? There is some third-party solution com coming up to use some of the space, but not sure if this one will make uh, a lot of sense. By the way, interesting also that here these you know like kind of bumpers. This is like for uh, for safety or for for the crash safety. These will actually like crash down or disappear when there's an impact from from above. That you know maybe when like persons flying on the hood. BW ID5 GTX, we put it to the sports mode and acceleration, let's go. Top 80 kilometers an hour, that went really quick. All wheel drive power here, the official figure, slightly uphill here, official figure to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour is 6.3 seconds. It's not, no, not like exaggerated, you can still sustain that from the G forces but still reasonably quick. The entry versions are slower, 10.4 or 8.4 seconds in the acceleration figure than with rear wheel drive. This one on here, the all wheel drive model, which also runs under the GTX name, at least in Europe. So far not available in the US, also not for the ID4. They, are the, they don't call it GTX in the US. I'm not sure why exactly. It's actually a cool brand name. They should also export that to the US actually also with you know, the design pack and so on and so on. The interesting thing about this one here is we have quite a substantial wheelbase. It's not a very short vehicle, but it still handles like a golf. It has a lot of weight, yes. You do feel that in corners, but you know, acceleration wise and also when you want to troll your cameraman. <laughs> 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 would have needed a third camera now for me because he was looking at oh, what's the camera and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's really funny so very spontaneous acceleration already when you are at speed that yeah that's spontaneous but soft yeah it, it's not yeah. it's not too Good harsh job. yeah we, we've job. we've experienced more yeah more forceful electric vehicles definitely and the handling is really nice with that battery pack that is all placed in the bottom of the vehicle, low center of gravity, and it feels very agile, very cool steering input, very direct, so it's a very crisp drive. You can also check out always, by the way, if we really have that DCC, because here in that individual mode, there we see it, DCC is an option, there you can really fine tune that suspension in so many different ways. There are also these presets, that's the adaptive suspension and although we have the biggest 21 inch wheels mounted yeah <laughs> klaus the head of design we also had recently an interview with him in the id bus he always has like big experience of course from design perspective but comfort wise it's always the question ah, do you lose too much comfort then but here i think it's so far it's quite fine because the dcc the adaptive suspension is doing a good job you can live with these 20 inch wheels of course, usually I would rather tend to recommend a compromise. 20 inch might be a good compromise, which is standard also for the GTX model when you have good looks. At the same time, you still have a little bit more dampening from these tires. But it is really cool to have some slalom effect here. This, yeah, it really handles very, very nicely. It's also good noise insulation. It's reasonably silent in here. With electric vehicles, there's always the problem that there's no engine sound covering some of the background noise. Therefore, you might hear that subjectively more present, but it's a very good noise insulation here. Assistance systems, this one here is equipped with the travel assist, and that means it keeps the distance to the car in front of us. We can also you know, activate then the lane keeping assist, and here you can see, is it smooth or is it more you know, hectic? But so far, 
very soft steering movements, keeping the car in the lane and also in the distance. Traffic sign recognition. Now you've maybe already seen the car is adjusting the speed here to new 60 kilometers an hour speed limit. So these level two autonomous features are working very well. There's also the blind spot monitor in the side mirrors, nice integration. That is also one of the most helpful features. If you would go for the rear wheel drive model or the all wheel drive model, I've also tested the Audi Q4 e-tron both as rear wheel drive and all wheel drive and they're essentially, essentially, technologically, essentially technologically the same vehicle. And I have to say the rear drive models, they have less punch, they have less acceleration power, yes. However, from the driving agility, I do still prefer the rear wheel drive models. You can then save some money for that and you get out of the corners a little bit better because the rear spins the rear spins a lot, spins around a little bit. With that all-wheel drive, you always have then, you know, this pulling from the front wheels. It still handles sporty and it still has this rear wheel bias but you, have, of course, have less rear wheel bias then. So although there's more punch, I feel that with the pure rear wheel drive models, you have a sporty, more purest driving feeling, and they're also fast enough, especially if you go for the model with 8.4 seconds in the acceleration figure. So that just as a tip, when you say, ah, it was a really cool review with the GTX, but maybe I don't want to spend all the money for the GTX, will I be happy with the rear wheel drive model? Yes, you will you will maybe only miss the all-wheel drive when you have a situation you know, where you really need an all-wheel drive when you have a slippery road and, and so on and so on. It's always weird, right, to get on the wrong side of the road. Um, you always expect oncoming traffic, but the thing is, you should always expect something unexpected. And all our uh, fans from the UK now say like, finally, for once, Thomas was driving on the right side of the road. <laughs> So uh, now we're rolling here once again, 60 kilometers an hour. And I've also spent some time on the motorway. It's basically doing the same good job, also good noise insulation wise and so on. The roundabout visibility, if you ask yourself ID4 or ID5, well, to the rear you have this, you know, that is split. So the visibility in the ID4 is a little bit better, but that's not a crucial point at all. I can see who's behind me. That's, that's not a problem. So I think it's rather a question of styling indeed. It even has bigger trunk volume-wise measured under the cover, as we said earlier, but then that falling roof line. So if you want to transport very high bulky box alike things, that might be an advantage for the ID4. But yeah, driving wise, there is no difference at all. Well, the thing is the ID5 here has some, like a little advantage as for the efficiency because that form here is more aerodynamic. So it, it will matter more if you hammer the throttle or keep it light. But this one here then, just from the aerodynamics, is a little bit better. But overall, I think the question is really not in like how does it drive differently or is there any practicability, pro or con, but really which one do you prefer styling wise? At the moment we are using Google Maps by the way, but also if you would use something else in the infotainment system, it will not be my favorite infotainment system of all time, of course not, but here this new software generation, we still don't have like backlit uh, sliders here. Yeah, but the system itself, when you uh, want to do something um, also while driving, it happens faster now so when you go to this vehicle mode here for example everything is going faster and that's definitely finally a step forward recently we've seen the golf 8 episode with the updated infotainment there they put in a new chip new infotainment chip plus new software it's the same chip they have been using here already just that the com the software here was already more complex therefore it wasn't really helping now with this new software version it is better Again, it won't be a great, you know, prize-winning or award-winning infotainment system, but now at least it has some responsiveness as for the speed when you when you put in things and so on and so on. As for recuperation, basically we have the driving mode, which I said here at the steering wheel, or at that steering wheel stall column, and here I can switch from D to B. 
D mode is rather when I leave my foot off the throttle, the car is rolling. B mode is then recuperation, I leave my foot on the throttle, and there's substantial recuperation, not a super harsh one, so that is not aiming to like a Tesla recuperation experience, more like that you want to build a good transition for ICE car customers. Internal combustion engine, of course, if you haven't heard ICE as abbreviation. And I think that's somewhat fine. There's always the question, which one is the best way to do that, to use the regenerative braking? At the end of the day, it won't matter so much. Here in the D mode, for example, I'm just using the brake then if I want to decelerate. And then first recuperation is being used. And if you need more deceleration power, then the real brakes are being applied. And in the B mode, this is done more with lifting the throttle already. And to me, meanwhile, I have to say adaptive recuperation would be a solution. Here in this case, it kind of works with the um, adaptive cruise control. Um, but to me, adaptive recuperation is good because then the car is rolling when there's no one in front of you and the car is doing recuperation when there's someone in front of you. Um, yeah. As I said, I don't have like a specific mode for that in here, but something like that does happen when you are using the adaptive cruise control and we'll be showing that to you earlier. So overall, the driving experience is really like, you know, goes like one circle, you know, it's very smooth, everything, all the elements are fitting together. BW shows that hardware-wise, or beautiful, um, bright or turquoise-wise mountain waters here, because, you know, a lot of sediments are in, in there. So they show that they know what they're doing hardware-wise, Software-wise, there has been a lot of failures, definitely. Now they're picking up the game, it is getting better. We hope that they continue on this journey and keep improving the software. But once again, hardware-wise and how it handles and safety ratings also, everything from the, all the hard facts, this is so well done. And also now that you have this improvement from the, from the, from the fast charging, DC charging now at 135 kilowatt, this is, more and more promising. Seating wise, by the way, very nice, very comfortable. You have both seats, oh, that was ID4, both seats available also for the GTX, these comfort seats, or then here these integrated sport seats, which are doing a great job. And now you're also with the microfiber surface, really premium alike feeling. Also, all animal free services done here for the steam to come, as I said. So, really recommend these seats as well. Here, these sport seats, they keep you tight at the same time, they relieve stress from the lower lumbar area because they keep the weight in the shoulders. So I'm really happy with that overall. And yeah, when you want to do some overtaking maneuvers, by the way, so we're driving a little bit slower than actually allowed, we can actually do that. So um, this is a, it's like a Golf Plus, you know, from a you know, pre-pre-generation or something. Now I'll take my chance. Watch out. Here we go, 100. There we go. So that was really smooth, really quick. And this can also be a safety thing, you know, when you can accelerate really nicely and have some power reserves, then you can, you know, in a, more, in, in, in a quicker way, you can get into the right lane again and you're safe. Here, one kilometer or 60 miles an hour is allowed. Nice winding road right here. And this car indeed really feels very safe now off the throttle yeah i have to help with the brakes even more recuperation then and all the time here i wasn't even using the real brakes at all there is a very nice brake blending here in this vehicle what does it mean you do not feel the transition between the normal recuperation and the real brakes that are being applied so once again that speaks in that direction hardware wise so well done this vehicle yeah but what about the final consumption and that of course then also calculates the real world range for that 77 kilowatt hour net battery. Final consumption, electric range for today. Good conditions, quite warm, not too warm, not too cold, and also rather steady speeds, some acceleration, and then we can score a rather ideal consumption and range here. 19 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers, so that's some 30 kilowatt hours on 100 miles means 
quite exactly 400 kilometers electric range or 250 miles. It will be less in very cold winter times, although this, this one does feature a heat pump, but still it will be less than the range. Or if you like really, you know, hammer it through with high speed and so on. Now tune in to the VW ID4 episode or the Q4 e-tron with both versions.